All right. Well, now's the time of the meeting where I get to sit back and introduce our guest for tonight. So we have uh, Sam Hunter here from the Photo Hunter. So she is a uh, professional photographer. So she takes um, uh, headshots. She takes uh, lifestyle shots. Uh, she does. She does all sorts of interesting things. So uh, and the really good thing about uh, Sam is a lot of photographers have a studio that you've got to go to and uh you've got to sort of sit in their uh, studio and they've got all the setup all the lights there and all the backgrounds and backdrops and uh green screens that which they can superimpose onto uh, all sorts of things well sam is one of those photographers that uh prefers the genuine experience so she comes out to you and uh so she's often seen around other people's uh, premises their workplaces uh she takes people out into uh, all sorts of interesting places and environments and so that's all part of uh taking uh photos photographs that are branding lifestyle and uh, business uh, photos that are authentic and really reflect uh, who the business and the brand is and of course it all, all starts to uh, tell a story as well too so I happen to uh, have got uh, speaking to Sam I think at breakfast a uh, uh, couple of weeks ago which uh, that doesn't sound like how it should sound uh, we met at breakfast at, uh, at that a friend had invited us to a whole lot of us and uh we got uh, talking there and uh and i sort of um as sam was talking about her photography and what she does and how she works with people I thought, oh this is really fascinating this is really interesting and i'm thinking oh you would be good to uh, have as a guest on our show so that's how sam got here because she's just got this fascinating take and some really interesting perspective on it all as well too so i would love you all to give sam a big rousing virtual round of applause uh to sam Hunter, the photo hunter, who's going to share with us some of her photography tips. Over to you, Sam. Oh, thanks, Nick. That um, that introduction was one of the best I think I've ever had in my life. Oh, oh my pleasure. I, and you too. That. I think I'll just record that bit. But hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. I've got so much to say. And we've even got a uh, journalist photographer here tonight, too. So that's also exciting. Every photographer has got a different style, a different point of view, um, a different way of explaining things, a uh, different way of shooting. Everything is different with every photographer. And that's what I love about the, um, the world of imagery. So what I am going to do first is, um, yes, I did want you to ask questions through the process. So um, put your hand up or, or um, put it in the, in the chat because I'd love to answer your question as it comes up, that would be awesome. So hang on, um, share. I'm going to share this thing with you. Can everybody see that? I hope so. All, right. All looking good. Okay, great. So oh, now, good, another Canon user. Yay! Hey, yay! The best, and it is. Uh, you can't beat it. I actually used to um, be a Nikon user, but now I've sold all of my stuff and i bought canon so um it's definitely a photographer's choice and what feels good in your hand at the end of the day it does come down to how you take the photo and then how you edit that photo too so um something to keep in mind now i've got so much to say i'm just going to put my timer on because you know what i could talk for more than 50 minutes on this one so i'm just going to put my timer on so i can keep an eye on myself Branding photography and imagery it has become such a competitive world out there now these days that because we're judging so quickly and because social media is just a, a scroll of the thumb, we want people to stop at the scroll. And if they're not stopping at the scroll, we're sort of putting in so much effort and time to do posts and send photos and do whatever. And if it's not getting stopped at the scroll, well really what's the use of doing the post so one of the biggest things that's holding us back from having our photo taken is photo fear so photo fear is something that we all have i am going to get you to do one little interaction and it's the only interaction i really am going to be asking you to do through this whole thing is what's your photo fear can you put it into chat so i can have a look at it because Photo fear to me, everybody has something different. Whether, well, me personally, it's my skin and the way I'm posing. I always am critical of 
how I'm posing and I look at it and go, oh my God, why didn't I do this? Or why didn't I stand like that? <clears throat> I can't quite see the chat, so let me have a look. Smiling, I'm not comfortable. Um, look fat and ugly. Okay, these, yeah, these are all common. Okay. All right, good, good. Smiling is one a, a big one because people just don't understand that your smile can be changed in so many ways. So let's have a look at some of the different photo fears that I hear every day. So first of all is they have got an excuse. I need a haircut. I need to lose weight. I don't know how to do my makeup. I don't know what to wear. I don't have time. I'm not photogenic. I hate having my photo taken. I don't know how to pose. So if you've said one of those, you're definitely in the category with just about everybody else that I hear when they say, I don't really want my photo taken because. So because we have this particular photo fee, we hold ourselves back from moving forward and being, being able to showcase what we really have and who we really are through the power of photography. So if that was one of you, well, there is a fix for every single one of those points. And if you said something that your point's not there, I can guarantee there'll be a fix for that one as well. So one of the main ones that we um, really struggle with is posing. Now, standing in front of a camera can be quite daunting if you don't do it all the time. If you're always in front of the camera and you're posing, you become natural at it because you continuously see photos of yourself and go, oh, I look good in that pose. I'm going to do that one all the time. And you find that you've got a signature pose that you'll just pose every time the camera is out because you know you look good in that pose. So everyone's favourite is the natural pose where you're not having to sit there and look at the camera. And that's usually in a styled photo shoot, more like a lifestyle. A staged photo is usually for your professional, where is your headshot? And then, of course, you've got to know, your photographer's got to know the different shapes of bodies in order to suggest a pose that is flattering for you that's not so flattering. The next one with posing is body language. And it's imperative that you know how to um, interact and look engaging when you're posing. This means which way you're facing, um, including your shoulders. Everything is, is speaking. So every photo is actually speaking to your targeted audience. Following your photographer's lead is also important because they can see something that you can't see. So whether it's lifting your chin up a little bit or looking down or something like that. So if you've ever had a professional photo shoot and you hear them go, Head up a little, a little more, a little more, a little to the left, a little to the right. Sometimes it's really annoying and I hate it when photographers do that to me, but I know that they can see what I can't see. And the second one for posing is like your photographer. If they're telling you how to pose and what to do, it doesn't feel so uncomfortable when you feel relaxed with them because you know that they are there to help you and for you to look your best. So the whole idea of posing is to create connection, create connection with your um, potential um, viewers and connection with your current viewers as well. There are so many hundreds of poses that you can do, but you've got to find the right pose that's telling the right story. Now, striking a pose is one of the biggest things that we, um, that that's going to speak. So am I facing this way? Am I facing that way? Everybody's got one side of their face that's opposite to the other side. So whether it's a lazy eye, their smile is up to one side or it's down to the other side, your face is not balanced. Nothing in your body is balanced. So if you can understand which is your best side, which if you have a great photographer, they'll absolutely know which is the best side for you. But being able to focus on um, the posing and um, how do I say this, and getting your best side, you can leave it up to your photographer and the viewing that you have afterwards, because usually your photographer will take a few through a viewing. You'll do a pose this side, a pose that side, and then a pose in front, and then you can decide which is better for you. 
see this lady here she's got her face to the side to the other side and then directly to the front so for her it was easy to be able to say i like that photo or i don't like that photo the serious smile the you know the, the the serious face or the fun smile or just cracking up laughing it really is um speaking to your audience on how you want to be seen sitting down and posing is another way of posing it can make you um look very relaxed it can also make you feel very relaxed too so depending on what your story is and what you're trying to say to your targeted audience is depending are you standing up are you sitting down and then how do you make that position look the best that you possibly can another thing that we go through when your photographer is taking your photo one of the biggest things that i personally make sure i know where your photo is going if you're just going to take a photo and you don't know where it's going what colors of your branding um and where the what the photo is for you're really just taking a photo and wasting your money because if you really want to keep your branding consistent and keep that level of professionalism flowing through your all of your digital platforms you'll find that the design and the style before you take the shoot is going to help so much more and improve the overall look of when you actually do your branding then into your marketing <clears throat> now look at this guy wes i knew that he was having a headshot and with that headshot we were doing an email signature block which is what you can see now so we designed him an email signature block this was to make sure that we knew exactly which way his face was facing so if you're engaged onto the page you've got it spot on if you're looking off the page that's an instant body language of you're disengaging with whatever you're marketing so in order to be able to be into it you want to be looking onto the page i've seen so many headshots that are actually looking off the page like the bottom one there and i wonder why why aren't you engaging onto the page so although we don't realize it up front but when you are made aware of this on body language on which way you're facing with your branding you will probably see it so much more now and you'll go oh look at that guy he's facing the wrong way he's not engaging um or he's facing off the page that doesn't look right so it's something that's really important to me that i'm aware of all of your um positions where is the photo going to be used because you can use one photo in so many different places so i hope that makes sense and i hope that you understand that body language in photography is going to speak louder to your targeted audience than what you actually think it does it's a really valuable point because our brains work in a way that is subconscious we're not really thinking it but when you look at the two differences of um where's engaging and then where's disengaging you understand how that works well i hope you do another reason that we like to know how to pose and which way to face is that where the writing is where it says um you know showcase branding blah 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 this is called negative space in photography negative space gives you that opportunity to put your photo somewhere where you're facing into the wording which then engages your whole entire message so facing into your page i know i said it with the last one it can be used on so many different um uh, brochures um emails wherever you're putting your photo face onto the actual wording and onto the page this is another fine example of some of my clients who have said to me i'm i, I need some um, branding photos we need to make sure that um i'm going to be positioned on this poster in the right way so then we've got to decide through the whole design with your photographer do you want full body half body do you want to face this way do you want to face that way 
So in order to get your design of your brochure or, or, or your, um, your landing page, wherever you're going to be putting your photo, we need to make sure that it's not only the right colors with your branding, which I'll get into much later, is you're facing the right way. So the um, Bank of Queensland lady, she needed the more of the full body and Todd, he just needed a headshot. So knowing what you want is really important. And if you don't know what you want, well then discovering these things with your photographer is, is the first step to giving you that level of comfort. Because if you've got that comfort going, this is what I'm gonna do with my photos, these are where I'm going to put them, and this is how I wanna be seen. It's a language that's spoken to the entire world because that's what you're doing. You're putting it out there into the entire world. So facing the right way, full body, half body, all of these tiny little things that you might not think of plays a really big part when you get your photos and go, oh, what am I gonna do with this photo? Where am I gonna put it? So before we come to that problem, we have a discovery session first to find out what you want to do with your photos. What do you want your photos to say to your targeted audience? And where is it all going to go? Number two is preparation. This is one of the biggest things that people don't understand, whether it's, you know, flipping the hair out of your nose for the men or, you know, taking your lipstick off your teeth for the women. There is so much to do with the preparation. So your hair and makeup, yes. We have to remember that these photos for your branding is somebody else's first impression. So that first impression has got to be there instantly. So you wanna put your best foot forward. In this case, it's your best photo forward. So grooming, if your nails are going to be in the photo, Yes, you want to make sure that you, that you are fully groomed because dirty nails or chip nail polish or whatever, you're going to see that in the photo if your hands are going to be in the photo. Your clothing. Yes, the time is now to get out your best suit. Don't save your best suit for the wedding or the best suit to go out for, you know, that special occasion, that best suit to, you know, really showcase yourself. It's for your photos. Get out your best suit. Get out your best dress. Look your absolute best. Clothing, we've gone through that. Okay, don't eat before the shoot. Having food in your teeth is not a cool thing. So just drinking water and going to get it out doesn't always get food out of your teeth. So either bring a toothbrush or don't eat at all. And oops, we don't wanna spill anything on our clothing. So this is all part of preparing. Sleep well the night before. I know it sounds a little crazy, but when you come in with tired eyes, it really makes a big difference because your eyes and the bags under our eyes really showcase how you're feeling. And it's actually really important. Your eyes are the soul to your window, they're the windows to your soul. So people are going to be looking into your eyes. Your eyes are telling the story just as much as your clothing, your posing, and everything else that comes with it. <clears throat> um, what have I got here? Let me move this out of the way. Whoops, missed that one. Okay, what to wear. What to wear now. I did cover some of that in what to wear. I wanted to showcase one of my clients, Helen Harrison, because she nailed everything when it comes to branding and her photos. So we spoke about the colors that she has in her branding, which you can see is the lighter blue and the darker blue. So in order for her to have her photos consistent with her branding, so it's a flow and it looks like it's meant to be there. That photo is designed to be on that, um, on that platform. With that design, everything that she's chosen to wear is specifically with the colors. So if she was wearing red, for example, that color would not go with her branding. 
So when she's putting out all this um, marketing, you know, um, brochures and whatever else she's doing, the red jacket or the red dress or whatever else, or even yellow, it wouldn't flow. So the consistency is really important that it's meant to be there. It not only looks more professional, <clears throat> but it's making you stand out because it does look professional and it flows with consistency. It just looks better. And she loves it. And I think it looks amazing as well. I'm sure you'd all agree if that was a red jacket or something like that, it would just be an eyesore. <clears throat> Discovering um, your branding with your photographer before the shoot, this is why it's so important because you end up with finishes like this. Same with Julie Mason. Now, Julie Mason is, um, you know, one of the world's best in um, sales marketing and her colouring with this jacket, we tried so many different jackets to go with her branding colors. And this is the one that she just rocked up with and knew that it was, even though we tried so many different colors, you will eventually work out your clothing is just as important as your smile, as your hair, as your pose, and where you're putting the photo, your clothing is blended in. And if you're not blending in and you're standing out like a sore thumb, it's going to lower that level of professionalism. Whether it sounds, you know, a little bit harsh or not, it really does make a big difference when you dress for the occasion. And in Julie's case, she dressed for the occasion. Now this one here, I, I couldn't help but use myself as an example, right? Because I've got so many different um, types of audience, right? I've got tradies, tradies who just wear their, you know, their, their shirts like my top one. I've got the business people. I've got, um, you know, the corporate. I've got creative. So many different um, categories of, of, of people that could use my services. So me personally, and maybe you can fit into this same, um, you know, window that I'm looking at, is that trying to find your targeted audience and have that photo that's going to speak to them is really important to be able to say, you know what, I want the tradies to like me, or I want the lawyer to like me, or I want the, um, you know, the creative artist to be attracted. So to find the right photo that's going to attract my targeted audience is something that you can mix it up with. So if you're anything like me and you've got a number of targeted audience that have got all different you know, levels of professionalism, you can mix it up. Don't be afraid to mix it up. You could be that person like Nick that has the um, the icon of crazy shirts and you go, oh, Nick is always in a crazy shirt. And they become familiar with that. It becomes part of your branding and a part of who you are. That is awesome because that is Nick and he doesn't need to make those changes. But when you're dealing with somebody like myself who has that opportunity to stand in front of the camera and mix it up, don't be afraid to change your clothes. Don't be afraid to target all of your audience, not just specifics. I first used to just go for corporate and then I thought, well, really, I'm a branding photographer. So there are so many different um, companies out there that aren't always the corporate um, style. So mix it up. Don't be afraid to um, show a little bit of personality and Get some color into it if that's if that's what your branding allows you to. Blue is in my branding. That's why I've always stuck with the black and the white. But recently I threw my blue suit on um, because blue is in my branding, like the previous photo that I showed you with Helen. She's also got blue. Check out my time. How am I going for time here? 20 minutes. Editing. Editing is one of my favorite things in photography. And this is how I started in photography, because you can take a photograph and you can turn it 
into something that's even more beautiful. Yes, the camera never lies, but enhancing a photo is so much fun. Right, this is part of the fun that I'm talking about. Advanced editing is used all over the world. You can't look at a, a magazine cover and think that that's not edited. 100% it's edited. Every magazine cover is edited all over the world, everywhere, without a doubt, I can say it. Celebrities, you, you know, they've shown um, magazine, when magazines were more popular, you know, Women's Day, that have a photo going, oh, look at, um, you know, Elle McPherson even. She's, she's out in the street and she's looking all haggard or they're happy to show some celebrity that's not edited because the difference is incredible. So keep that in mind. Editing plays a massive part in professional photography. So to find a photographer that knows how to edit well, you just need to look at their um, galleries and then see if they look too overdone or not done enough, okay? Creative editors will make you shine, not make you look like you're somebody else or that you've lost too much weight or your teeth are too white. So knowing that your photographer is going to um, keep that standard level and not go overboard is really, really important. And also to know that your photographer knows your branding so they can edit your branding accordingly. Um, and then also you have control. You've got full control over editing. You can always say to your photographer, can you just edit me a little bit more or can you edit me a little bit less? Now, a good photographer will edit you right on that spot where it looks it's just like you, but you're just enhanced. Now, me personally, I sharpen your eyes, I soften your skin, I might whiten your teeth a little bit, and I'll do soft body adjustments on request. Backgrounds, yes, that's another story altogether. So when it does come to editing, this is um, one of the examples. What you can actually do with editing and how you can enhance a photo to be able to um, be continuous with your branding. So you wanna be able to make sure that your branding still flows. One of the, these photos, in the, the photo in the middle with Julie Mason, she did a series of um, uh, YouTube thumbnails and uh, we were just trying out different colors and the yellow one is obviously what she chose because the thumbnail, you need it clear. So editing um, on your face, this is a fine example of before and after. I don't like to go overboard. Now, what I was saying before about her skin has been slightly edited, her eyes are brighter, I've whitened her teeth, even though you might not be able to tell. And check this one out, I've also put eyelashes on her. So for the ladies that are in the room tonight, well, maybe the men might want eyelashes as well. Paul, you're laughing. Do you want eyelashes? No. So if you're looking at getting your makeup done professionally, or if you want to rock up to the studio, just like my beautiful uh, client here, Ali, I specifically asked if she could wear no makeup so I could do this for her. And I said, every single photo, I will put digital makeup on you on every single photo that you choose if you allow me to use your photo as an example because not everybody wants their photo of a before and after to be shown to the world and I use this one here because it's still her and it still looks like her if I was to go overboard which now I'm thinking I probably should have done as an example it just won't look like her first impressions are so valuable and if you don't have something that looks like you you lose credibility instantly and you don't want that you want to still look like you editing should be enhancing your features not changing your features everything that is permanent on your face should stay there moles scars whatever zits they can go you know 
whatever else is 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 um temporary that can go anything permanent can stay okay and advanced editing for photos like this is definitely the winner when you're looking at a photographer that knows how to do advanced editing the difference is unbelievable now this client of mine we didn't have enough room to actually take a group photo in their premises because the hallway wasn't wide enough they didn't have a lunch room that you know we could move all the chairs and tables out of the way so we all headed down into the car park and took this photo mind you everybody's thinking oh my god this photo is not going to be the best we're in a damn car park this is the driveway coming down into the car park and you could hear the mumbling going on uh, 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 because nobody knew what i was going to do with the photo yes the boss knew he had a bit of an idea because we had a discovery session before we took the photos so he knew what we were going to create through going through what sort of um group shot do you want this is the one that he chose so this is the one that he got being able to understand advanced editing is is another world altogether because it it can really make your photo shine stand above the rest and create something that nobody else has so if you want something that nobody else has that stands out of the crowd advanced editing is something that you do want to invest in you don't want to just go for your standard photography where you're in a car park you want to invest in that powerful first impression when it comes to your um you know your photography it's valuable finding your style now i know i sort of covered this before finding your style with attracting your targeted audience now if i wasn't a photographer i wouldn't put that photo up where i'm screaming into my own camera that's just something that i wouldn't do if i was a lawyer you wouldn't get that so knowing what your style is and and what your level of professionalism is when it comes to connection whether you want to be fun whether you want to be serious um like for example when you're doing videos for um you know for funerals you wouldn't be laughing in your photo shoot you would have a, a photo that you are um compassionate where you look engaging where you look approachable um and, and that wouldn't be the first photo so finding your style and your personality is a very big factor for your photography another thing that we're going to cover is um where and when so the first two are your headshots deciding whether you want to have your headshot outside or a studio look is another um, conversation that you would have with your photographer in your discovery session the same with your profile shot profile shot number three was actually done in the studio and that is advanced editing and then um, number four is in his own premises deciding whether you want to have a lifestyle shot which is outside or whether you want the studio look is it all comes down to your branding whether it's going to be consistent a lot of people now these days are going for outdoor shoots because they don't work in an office they and even if they do work in an office some of them do it it is up to the individual at the end of the day look there are no rules with photography there are only guidelines guidelines for you to either you know take it in or not take it in yeah there are some rules you know linkedin say your headshot has to be 60 percent of your head should be within the box and this is what linkedin are recommending which is awesome because you've got the guidelines saying oh well I actually don't want all of my head in a box so you know I'm going to reduce it a little bit it's identification these images are meant to be an immediate identification so when people are scrolling through they go oh there's Ray there's Ron there's Paul there's Lana without having to 
you know, squint their eyes and bring closer to the actual screen. You just don't want people to be scrolling past you. You want them to be able to identify you easily. So if you are going to choose a background that's a little bit busy, you want it blurred. If you are going to choose, um, you know, a, a, a studio shot where it's just plain, you'll know that you're going to be seen um, a little bit quicker. So let's focus on your headshot. No headshot. Hands up if you've ever accepted a friend request on LinkedIn with somebody with no headshot. I have never, ever accepted somebody without a headshot because to me it's it looks like a scam i've got no idea who they are and i feel like they're hiding something and it doesn't sit comfortably with me so um in order to be able to connect with somebody instantly we're going to judge that's what we do we're human beings we judge through all different parts of our life so if you don't have a headshot, you're more than likely not going to be connected with people who want to connect with you. Okay, so why? Why do we need a headshot? And I know that to some people it's, it, it, it's just a headshot, but a headshot is your first impression that does count. It builds instant trust and it identifies who you are. It also conveys the message of who you are and it's going to connect with your audience. Instant attraction, that's what it is. It is going to attract somebody instantly. You can get full um, uh, value out of one headshot. So people think, oh, I'm just gonna put my headshot on my LinkedIn. Oh no, if you're gonna pay for a headshot, you know what, put that headshot wherever you can. Put it on your email signature block, on your banners and posters, your business cards, brochures, web page, all your digital platforms. So try to get the value for your money. Instead of just putting one headshot on your LinkedIn, put that everywhere, everywhere that you possibly can and make sure that it's consistent throughout all of your digital platforms. If you're going to have one headshot on your LinkedIn. Well, maybe you could put that headshot on your other digital platforms as well, like your Facebook page or your Instagram or wherever else you're, um, you're marketing from. <clears throat> I wouldn't click on somebody who doesn't have a headshot. I hope you guys can understand the importance because what the, I don't know, marketing experts say, and this changes quite a lot, is a hundredth milli of a second that they're instantly going to look at you. Now, I have used these examples with plain backgrounds because it is easy to identify your headshot. That's all it is. It's just your head so they can see your face. Headshot backgrounds. So here we go. This is a quick identification. It is a studio shot versus your lifestyle shot. Now, don't get me wrong. When I say studio shot, this was actually shot in his office. So you don't have to go to a studio to have a studio shot. To be able to identify these two, you can probably see the one on the right a lot clearer and quicker than what you could with the one on the left, which is a little bit busy. So the busier the background, the more time it's going to take for them to identify who you are. So if you want that instant, and I mean within a hundredth milli of a second, you probably want to go for the one on the right, which LinkedIn do recommend, and I, and I know I keep saying LinkedIn, but LinkedIn do recommend that you have a, a clear background, not a busy background. and um, I like both personally, and it does depend on what your um, what your business is. Like, what are you selling? Um, who are you? And more about you. And for Linda, this is perfect for her. Um, for Jason, that's perfect for him. So just because, like I said before, people have got 
rules and regulations and guidelines and all the rest of it. Do this, do that. You can't have a busy background. It has to be wider. It has to be this. No, 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 no. At the end of the day, the decision is what you're comfortable with and then it's consistent with your branding. Digital backgrounds. This is something that I absolutely love. You can jazz up your headshot. This is what I was saying. You can have a busy one, not so busy, blurred backgrounds if they are going to be busy. Yes, absolutely. So having a digital background gives you so much creativity that you can throw into your branding. It's awesome. Um, creativity, there's no, there's no ending. You can do whatever you want with the back of your headshot when it um, when it comes to digital backgrounds. Another one, just to show many examples for one headshot and how they can all look so different. Different in the way that that was still the colors that she requested, but we just gave her a few different options because she wanted to see what they all looked like. So, you can blend into your background, which is something you don't want to do. You want to stand out from your background. To me, she blends into this background. So it wouldn't be something that I would recommend. The pink um, jacket with the pink background, you want to be able to pop, not blend in. So when you are looking at your photo, if you're not popping and it doesn't stand out, you want to look at the color of the clothing or the color of your background. They make a huge difference to that instant attraction. All right, cropping your headshot. This is a big one when it comes to different photographers and their different styles. Um, I know some photographers cut off the top of the head. Looks awesome, I love it. There's no rules to say you shouldn't cut off the top of the head. Because at the end of the day, it is your face that you're trying to put out there. It is a head shot. It's not a body shot. So having your head cut off. Um, actually, this guy was kind of bald on the top. And he loved that his um, baldness was chopped off, which made him look more attractive. The next level is we're coming down a little bit further on the body. And it's just from the chest up. So... It shows a lot of the head, but it's chest up. Once again, it is your decision. It's your choice. What you think looks best for you. If you've got an amazing shirt and you want to show it off, well, go for the third one. It could be a really nice suit. You want to show that suit off. It's a headshot. It's still going to show your head. You can zoom in and out when it comes to loading your photo onto the actual headshot section. And they've always got a little circle that you can crop the photo in and out so you can see how close or how far away you want to be and how far away you want to be seen. So there's your three different options on how you can crop your photos. It's entirely up to you. I love them all at the end of the day, as long as the photo looks great and you can see who it is instantly, it's perfect. Try not to get too wrapped up in different photographers who have different rules. At the end of the day, they're guidelines. So it's your choice. Oh, photos and how we change. The photo of me holding the camera to my face, I wasn't even a photographer then, but that was my style back in the day um, with my really short hair. That's how I started off with my headshot. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking because you can't even see my face. <laughs> but that was how I started. Oh, look what camera I'm holding there. <laughs> it's not a Canon. Um, what, I'm, what, what this demonstration is, is that if you're changing, whether it's your hairstyle, your weight, um, your, 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 your branding, whatever it might be, if you're changing, so should your headshot. Everything changes in the world. Look at the phones that we had years ago. Look at the clothing that we had years ago. Look at the televisions that we had years ago. Everything in our life changes and it changes for the better. And so should we. If I was going to show a photo of me from, you know, 2015, 
which some people still do because they look young and amazing. And I'd love to have a photo of me still looking young and amazing, but that's not me. It's so not me. That's This is me now. This is what I look like now. So you want to show the now, not the what I look like back in my 20s. It doesn't, it doesn't um, resonate with people when they see you. It doesn't have that connection. And when people do know that that's an old photo, they know it's an old photo. So <laughs> update your headshots as you change, change your branding photos. People will tell. Next one is your style. Showing your style is completely up to you. There are so many different styles out there in the world, but being you is, is the most important one of all. You can't be somebody else because that's somebody else has taken. So as long as you are being you and it's authentic, whether you're serious or you're smiling, it doesn't matter. What matters is that it's you and it's real. Finding that level of comfort can come from your photographer. It can come from you within. And it's all about designing your style, making sure you know what your message is, what you want your audience to say. As long as your style is you and it's showcasing who you are and what you do and the story it's got to tell. Telling a story. All right, so these people have all got a different story to tell. We've got Jim, yeah, he's the pool guy. It's pretty obvious that he's a pool guy. The next one, Helen, now she's a counselor. We saw her photo before. She's got that warm, comforting, approaching look, you know, and then of course we've got the um, high-end accountant. He's right up there in his own firm. He's quite serious. He's in accounting. Who would have guessed? And then once again, I've used Julie Mason. Now, yeah, she's sales acceleration. Woohoo! She is ready to show her energy. She is ready to drive you to the top. So the storytelling of your photos, this is a fine example of how your story and how your photo can be told through the power of photography. Showcasing your style, yes. Now, it is something that everybody is going to have a different style, a different story, a different energy, a different personality. Our personalities can come across as, um, as something really quite personal. And to be honest, everybody wants that personal connection with service these days. We want to see your face. We want to see how how um, nice you look. Oh, she looks nice. Oh, he looks like a snob. Yeah, we do it. I know I've done it and you do it too. About page, about you page is your time to shine. The Google stats say that it's the second most visited web page of all. So if you are going to put a photo of yourself to showcase your style on your about me page, make it powerful because it's the second most popular page. Um, it's just the stats that Google know. So if you want to have a good look at your About Me page, it's probably a good time to do that now. Make sure that you're telling the story and you look engaging. Same here with Helen. I've used her as an example to keep this consistent. She's got that overall look of, I'm comfortable with myself and I can help you. So if you want to tell that story of your comforting, you want to help people, it is all about telling the story about who you are because people want to deal with a real person. Once again, another storytelling. We've got a musician, we've got a yoga teacher, and we've got someone in sales. This is a, another fine example, and I can't stress enough. If you're not being you in your branding photos, you're not telling the right story. So whether it's a prop that you want to use like the guitar, whether it's you want to sit in the bush and, you know, meditate, or whether you want to be flashing the money with some energy, it's all about storytelling, knowing who you are 
and knowing what you do is the key to tell the right story. Your branding style, um, this one, well, she, she just wanted to connect with her. So having a good look at her photos and what she gave me the message, I wanna connect with the earth. I wanna be meditating, I wanna have energy, I wanna feel comfortable, I wanna feel relaxed. These are all the key words that she had given to me in her discovery session. And this is what we came up with. So once you tell your photographer how you wanna be seen and how you wanna connect with yourself and your targeted audience, this is what can happen. You get a selection of photos that you can use across all your platforms that tell amazing stories. Entrepreneurs are taking it outside. Just about everybody now is taking their photos outside because it, it's giving that lifestyle look. It's giving that, yeah, I can come to you. I can be outside. So if you think that all your photos have to be inside, this is a great idea for you to start thinking. I want my photos outside. It's relaxing. Australia's beautiful. Now, you can have both. Showcasing your professionalism is usually your headshot and your style is showing them something about yourself. So there's the two difference. And I hope that you can have a good think about understanding the difference between you're not going to put a style photo in a headshot spot. So the positioning of where you put your photos is really important. I'm going to flip through these really quickly now because I'm looking at my timer. It's going really fast. This guy, what do you reckon he does? He doesn't work in a coffee shop, does he? No. The story here is saying he works for security and he's looking after that boat. I'm going to flip through some of these very quickly. This guy here is a pool cleaner. Telling the story about cleaning your pool. Telling a story is something that I keep saying and I have done for the past 48 minutes. It's so important that your photographer knows the key points of what you're trying to say in order for them to be able to capture it for you. And if you don't know how to tell the story through the power of photography, well, your photographer should. Everyone's looking at you, everybody. We put our photos out there so they can look at us. So make sure your photos are powerful. All right, now I'll come right to the end very, very quickly. Fantastic opportunity. Should we go through these now, Nick, now that I'm coming up to my 50 minutes? I think that'd be a great idea. Thanks, Sam. Okay, great. Opportunity, fantastic opportunity, number one. So for your headshot. Tonight I'm offering um, anybody who books in a headshot for this month, you get your headshot with your booking and you get another headshot for free valued at $120. So it's buy one, get one free. That is the first one. My prices are going up in, um, in May. So this is a really good month to book in for a headshot if that's what you're looking for. Opportunity number one, there's two of them. Opportunity number two, Free holiday. It is worth a thousand dollars. It's a four day holiday. There are so many places around the world you can go. Now the terms and conditions do apply here. A booking of showcase your pack, uh, showcase um, your style package, and showcase your place package. The first person to book in one of those packages will be gifted a voucher worth a thousand dollars to go on a holiday. I know, I can't hear you all screaming or see you all screaming, but I know I want to go on a holiday. Nick, do you want to go on a holiday? I'm I'm there. I'm there already. Yeah, I'm there already. <laughs> all right. So that's the that's the um opportunity number two. I'll be so happy to see you on a holiday that I've sent you on and I get photos. Not branding photos, but holiday photos. It'll just be awesome. And then, of course, the door prize is um, oh, the. Can we go to this one, Nick, or am I too far ahead? I, I reckon we are. Well, let's say just before the door prize, uh, does anyone have any questions at all? 
uh, of Sam uh, or uh, any comments at all. So uh, just uh, drop in a chat or just uh, click unmute and uh, ask away. And then we'll go through to the, to the draw. Actually, we've got one hand up and that'd be Lana. So uh, ask away, Lana. Well, where are you exactly located? Because obviously it depends whether I can take your service or not. Oh, I'm in Brisbane. So I'm actually... Like okay, that's a shame. <laughs> I'm in Melbourne. Oh. I'm in Melbourne. Okay, well, I'm coming down to Melbourne uh, maybe June. So I'm going to do a couple okay. of shots while I'm down there in June. All right, maybe we should chat for June. Because, yeah, it's it's on my list of things to do, this, yeah, headshots thing. So yeah, need to, yeah. everything is selfies on my phone. I really need to <laughs> actually get professional stuff done. So yeah. cool. I'll keep that in mind. Maybe we should have a chat before June. Yeah, well, I've written down your name so we can talk yeah. about that after when I come down. Yeah. Not a problem at all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, what have we got? I'm glad uh, I'm... Uh, I'm a Queenslander who's moved to Melbourne as well. Oh, Queenslander is moving to Melbourne. My goodness. Uh, moving away from the uh, good weather. Mind you, Melbourne does get good weather too. I've been down there when it's pretty hot as well. But, uh, and we've got South Australia. Awesome. Oh, there you go, Sam. Uh, you've got lots of opportunities to go and visit uh, the other states here in Australia. Oh, I can't wait. And so we've got some Kiwis on here as well too. So I reckon sort of, uh, New Zealand will be on your list as well. <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's uh, let's move through to the door prize. We do have a door prize, so maybe if you um, oh, if you run through the door prize, and uh, then I'll get uh, J M, one of my team. He's got the uh, way to actually draw the prize. So just let us know what it is, uh, Sam. Okay. Well, it is a full discovery session with myself. So what we do is I give you a full uh, branding overview. Oops. I give. Oh, hang on. I'm on the wrong page here. I give you a full branding overview. I uh, go through all of your um, social media platforms, go through all your headshots and any image that you have. We identify your style. Um, we go through how we can tell your story through the power of photography and then how it can all happen. And um, yeah, even give you a discount on that one as well. On awesome. if you make the booking so it's all about an overview of where you are now with your photography and where you can go with it excellent and that's and that's valued at what was that 550 is it yeah because we go yeah. through ev every single page of your web every single page on all your social media it's a awesome excellent so yeah. so there is our door prize for tonight um so we have loaded up everybody's name into the wheel of names so maybe if we just bring up that uh, wheel of names and uh so what we'll do is everyone's here your name is in there and remember you need to be in the room to win so uh, i know that uh poor old peter has uh, he's disappeared because he's running another program tonight uh, and he has won before when he's disappeared. Um, so uh, let's hope it doesn't land on him tonight. So let's go and uh, spin the wheel. Yes, Fred, he'll probably win. Let's go and spin that wheel. So virtual drum roll, please. As it spins around and our lucky winner is David Howarth. Are you here, David? And in fact, I can see David is here as well. So there we go. You're our lucky winner tonight, uh, David. So uh, congratulations. Uh, what we'll do is uh, we will get uh, Sam and yourself uh, in touch with each other tomorrow. So I'll make sure that uh, we do an email introduction to you both. Is, and uh, then you can- Is David in Queensland? Is he in Brisbane? I am, yes. Sorry. Um, I am here and I live in the Gold Coast. So yeah, All thank right, you. David. Well, I've just decided since you're in Queensland, I'm also going to give you a free headshot. Oh, you are amazing. Thank you so much. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Really enjoy the presentation tonight. You're great and um, look forward to that. It's amazing. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, we'll be in touch. So let's get ready for your new, your updated headshot. And you can use it on things like this webinar as well. So because we can't see your face at the moment. Yeah, because we're having dinner. We're multitasking out here. With oh, well done. <laughs> yeah, Fantastic. No, really Thank you so much. Really appreciate that.
No worries. Excellent. Oh, well, Sam, look, thanks very much for uh, coming on tonight and uh, sharing with us uh, your expertise and uh, your wisdom. Uh, I know I learnt a whole heap uh, tonight. I, I sort of uh, thought that I was really quite photogenic, but uh, I really think of having learnt tonight that maybe I wasn't and now that I can be. So uh, thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, so let's uh, give it up and give uh, Sam a, uh, a nice big virtual round of applause to uh, thank her for her time tonight. And oh, remember, thank if you. You... I just want to say thank you to everybody for being here tonight. You know, um, I know I'm a great photographer, but when it comes to the speaking side of it, you know, we have our specialties, don't we? And then we have things that we're not so special at. So thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in tonight. I really appreciate it. Excellent. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, uh, your uh, speaking tonight was uh, absolutely awesome. So our uh, presentation was good. Perfect. So uh, yeah, well done. And uh, thanks for coming on tonight. And if people do want to get in touch with you, what is the best way to get in touch with you? Oh, well, uh, oh, hang on. Is my, did I share my screen? Um, photohunter.com.au. Oh, where are we? There we go. There we go. There's the details on screen. Are you so on LinkedIn? It's... I usually yes. Yep. yes. Okay. Sam Hunter. All right. I'll check you out. All right. I've just dropped the uh, uh, the URL for your website into chat. So now is probably a good time to start saving the chat. Uh, actually, just before you do save it. Uh, just remember, this will be up on the Smashco YouTube channel tomorrow. Uh, so uh, if you um, do you want to just unshare your oh no leave it there Sam uh, so if you want to watch this uh, again uh, we'll be up on the YouTube channel tomorrow if you know someone that would benefit from watching this uh, also uh, then they can go to the uh, YouTube channel and watch it there if you're not a subscriber to it now's a good time to go there and subscribe and if you click the little bell after you've subscribed then you'll get a notification once the uh, replay has been uploaded so the link there is now in chat you want to click through and go and subscribe to that other place to subscribe to is business owners smashing online facebook group so that's where our online tools and apps they often get shared there uh you can uh, also introduce yourself and introduce your business there uh, if you've got a comment a question uh it's a great place to ask and share in that uh, community as well too um, and uh, as ever, if you're uh, looking for any advice around your online strategy, uh, any apps and tools, uh, sort of uh, websites, CRMs, uh, feel free to go to smashco.co and uh, you can have a look through some of our services there and uh, ask away. And of course, if there's anyone you want a connection to that has been on the show uh, as a guest, uh, more than happy to make an introduction as well. So again, Sam, thank you very much for uh, your time tonight. And uh, everyone here, uh, go and have a sensational week. Remember to save the chat before you go with those three little dots down the bottom. And uh, we'll see you back again.